Are your benefit costs dissolving your profits? Are you allocating too many resources to your HR function? Would you like to simplify your payroll process? In this episode of Score Business TV, we'll show you how to accomplish these goals and more. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Score Business TV, sponsored by Wells Fargo. In this series, experts share their opinions with business owners and entrepreneurs on a wide variety of topics. Today, we'll explain how a PEO can benefit your business in reference to costs, HR, and payroll. PEO stands for Professional Employer Organization. Our expert guest is John Coleman. John came to Paychex after being a customer there. As an entrepreneur, John has 25 years of experience as a business leader and sales executive. Oasis is a Paychex company. They provide PEO services offering compliance with federal and state employment laws, payroll processing, and employee benefits. Brian Smith is also joining us today. Brian has 28 years experience in the PEO business in the areas of finance, accounting, insurance, sales, and marketing. He is also a licensed Florida insurance agent. John and Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. John, let's start with you. What exactly is a PEO? Well, as you said earlier in the statement, PEO stands for Employee Organization. And we call it co-employment. In the old days, it was called employee leasing, but now it's co-employment. As, as the employer, is in support of the employer, I should say, we will take care of your payroll, your tax filings, handle health and benefits for your organization, as well as HR compliance. Okay, great. And um, Brian, wh who do the employees work for? Uh, they, they still, you as a business owner, still maintain those employees. You still uh, oversee those employees on a day-to-day -day activity. Uh, you run your business the same way you would run it uh, without us. However, now you can rely on us to help you attract and retain those employees. Okay, I mean, if I want to fire somebody, can I do that? Absolutely. Okay. We'd, we'd like to help you with some guidance and keep you in compliance when you do that. So we don't get into any trouble. Correct. Okay. And just as an FYI, I have been a customer of Paychex and also the PEO. So I have firsthand knowledge as a, uh, as a client as how this works, but uh, that might be helpful today. So what are some of the other benefits that uh, PEO offers? When you get a PEO overall, what we try and do is help the business owner focus on their core business and take away a lot of the headaches that come with running a small business. So I kind of put these in a few different buckets. The first would be insurance and benefits. The Small Business Administration says that small business spends 18% or more at benefits to large corporations. Through our larger groups, we're able to bring in benefits at a Fortune 500 level to organizations that they couldn't, they couldn't obtain on their own. Um, so insurance is very helpful, better benefits, usually to reduce costs. The second area would be compliance and legal support. Um, again, the Small Business Administration refers to the 18% costs are higher for small business when it comes to compliance. There's a lot of legal changes that happen daily and monthly on a federal or state level. Through, through the support of our organization, we would update the owners and HR on a routine, on a regular basis to any compliance issues that are out there, help reduce those costs for the organization. Those are two, two major areas. Um, Brian, paper administration, you agree? Oh, totally. Yeah, the, the, the paper side of the coin is, you know, the idea of, for the small to medium-sized businesses also, Dennis, is to uh, reduce that overhead in associated with doing that. You know, we're not telling you to get rid of your, your staff or your accountants or your, your legal, your, your centers of influence, but however, we're that support mechanism. So it will reduce a lot of the time spent uh, from filing, et cetera, on all your uh, state and local taxes as well. Okay. Obviously, the main area of payroll. Uh, payroll processing for a lot of companies is very burdensome. We take that burden away from the employer. Not only do we process payroll on, for them on a quarterly, uh, pardon me, on a daily, on a weekly basis, it's quarter, your quarterly tax filings. It's going to be your um, vacation and, um, and sick time accrual processes. It's going to be um, 
your W-2s, other tax filings along those lines. So these things help reduce, again, the employer time spent on some of these functions. Um, and with the PEO, you also get some other services that come with it, like recruiting and onboarding are part of our process. Because we support you in HR, we'll support you with finding good people, get them on board smoothly, and get it when they time to leave, also through OSHA, probably me, through um, OSHA, correct? Well, yeah, <laughs> Not yeah, OSHA. Really um, it, it, let me digress a little bit uh, for you too, Dennis. One of the things that I, and you being an end user at one time, what I like to, to go back to is the idea of having us as that co-employer to fall back on is it's going to, besides reduce some of your overhead, it gives you that recovery of time. So we like to say, you know, wh where's your time best needed? Okay, well, you want to focus on the core of your business, making that widget or getting to the next customer. Um, this allows you to, to get back some of that time. Um, from a standpoint of, I'm not sure where you're going with OSHA. <laughs> okay. I was thinking the employee, Sorry, when, sure. you know, when the employee leaves, yeah, yeah. it turns a benefit administration. Okay. We yeah. help you on the, on, the, on the back end. Yeah. Making sure you're all in compliance with that. Well, it's interesting, you know, I mean, to me it was a no brainer going with paychecks and having the PEO. Um, I, I, I know it saved us money for sure. It did cost something, but we got more benefit out of it. How would you describe that for our viewers as to some idea what it will cost or how it'll save them or just address that in some fashion? It's a great question, Dennis, because cost is relevant. And when you look at it, it's one of two factors, either employee per charge cost or overall percent of payroll. We're able to look at the client, help them decide what's best for them. But the real thing comes down to, is there a cost savings to your organization? And through economies of scale, as I mentioned earlier, as you look at the insurance benefits, health and, ben health and benefits, if we can drive some of those costs down for the overall employer, then over in general, we can reduce costs or maybe be cost neutral, hopefully, worst case scenario, and provide better benefits for the organization. I know, it, I know it saved me money. I don't okay. know what the percentage was, but it was, like I said, it was a no-brainer. So, um, and I'm, I'm unbiased. I'm just, well, thank it you. really, yeah. it was a great thing to do. So how many employees does an employer need to have to get involved with the PEO? Uh, good question, Dennis. Um, we, we have clients as small as five. Um, but anywhere five to a hundred is what we would consider small to medium size. Um, but we have clients as large as uh, a thousand and over, uh, especially in the franchise uh, or hospitality industry. Okay. And John, as an employer, could I get a PEO in every state in the country? Um, the answer is yes. As you know, here in Florida, our PEOs began originally, but now um, in terms of legal compliance, is they are not legal in all 50 states. They are legal? Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, let's say uh, I'm trying to decide whether to go and have a PEO or not. Uh, what should make up part of that decision? How do I decide? Well, there's several reasons uh, to decide. Um, one, how are you handling your, uh, your filing of your taxes now? How are you handling your workers' comp? What are you doing for your benefits? What are you doing for the life cycle of the employee? Um, so a lot of those questions that we try and discover with you will determine you know, the best solution that we can provide. Uh, we had a client just recently that uh, was unable to obtain because of their growth in infrastructure and adding different locations, um, they still weren't able to get a good features and benefits out of their health current health plan. The other thing they wanted to do is offer a 401k. So those are some of the things as you grow with us and the relationship builds, there's other advantages of these Fortune 500 style benefits that we bring to the table. Brian, you mentioned life cycle of an employee. Can you define what you mean by that? I'm not really sure. sure. Um, no, what, what we like to see that it doesn't seem to be a, a very apparent in the industry as much as what we like to do with the, the employer is the idea is so you can attract and retain employees. So everything from the onboarding experience with RPO to the fact that we're gonna take them to the stages as they grow with your company from training uh, we have a, a plethora of, uh, uh, of training material um, that they have access to. So when you're on our platform, all these things will be available to you to provide to your employees. Okay. And John, how much time might I recover uh, that I'm saving? This really depends on each organization. We say it's dealing with a small, or small company. And the person I was working with was not only answering the phones, but doing payroll, doing HR support work. 
And through tools I can bring the organization, we can, we can give that person time back in their day to work on the company's core business. Very important to them. We will leave this person's time from doing manual tasks to doing tasks to focus on the business's growth and development. So it's not just the owner, it's you're gonna save across the board of people that are doing those tasks that don't have to do them anymore, or it'll streamline them. Is that is correct? absolutely correct, Okay, yes. good. So how long does it take to set up a PEO? Let's say I say, okay, Brian, I'm interested in doing it right now. What? Are, how long is this gonna to take to do this? It's, uh, what we'll do is we come in with, depending on the size of the company or the entities, and it, what we'll do is we'll have a team uh, from our HR specialists to an onboarding specialist. And then what, usually about three to four weeks on an average. Uh, I've seen it as a turnaround in two to three weeks, depending on the size of the company. Um, and then if you have a larger company or of scale, magnitude or multi-state, then it could possibly be about a month. Okay, so it, you're it, saying that within... Well, as I say, a lot of depends on the business themselves as well. If, they're, if they dedicate a person to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, they give us paperwork we need to process it quickly, we can turn it around in seven days. I've seen clients come on board very, very quickly. So it really depends on the organization we're working with, how fast they can support us with documents we need to get them in the process flowing. Right, so I'm assuming you need basic information, employees' names and their socials, their addresses, Correct. and all, all that background information that, Correct. that the company should have anyway. It's a matter of the uh, current person that's maintaining that providing it to you, is that right? That's correct. We all have the ability with, with, our, with our organization, I can't say for all PEOs, but we do have ability to have one of our staff members work with the owner, to give them reports that we need, help them pull the reports that we need, and things go smoothly. Yeah. The nice thing is now, Dennis, maybe from the time that you used to use a PEO, but now we have what's called electronic onboarding. So a lot of the, the issues of sitting down, cafeteria style, having that presentation in front of every employees. Obviously we want their employees and the employer, whatever they would like us to do. It can be one-on-one, -on -one, it can be a group setting, but usually we're getting that information on the back on the back side. So a lot of that stuff is pre-uploaded to our system and then it's a communication. So we've built all the bridges, the APIs as they like to call it, all coordinate with their time clocks in our system as well. Okay, John, as an employer, do PEOs get involved in helping to recruit employees? PEOs in generally do, yes. Um, in our particular case, we have tools for organizations to help automate that process. For example, it comes to applicant tracking and recruiting, we can automate it, the process to where you build your own individual job description, but then we post it automatically for you to do job boards, for example, Indeed will go automatically or to your own website. And from there, the applicant can apply electronically and it goes hiring manager to review and, and evaluate. Okay, and let's say, uh, Brian, that I wanna get insurance, uh, health insurance, and I want benefits for me and my family. Is that something I can do with, through the PEO? Absolutely, absolutely. And well, the, the neat thing is, you know, we can also do tiering. So it's called classing in, in reality. It's when you have management style staff and then maybe you have um, another entity that's involved. So what we do is we look at how you wanna build that. So an employer can still have a strategy to match, um, contribute to those plans, and then the, the certain requirements that come into play once we look and vet those. Okay, is it required for me to pay myself through the PEO or, and do you recommend that I do that? Good question. Um, yes, we do want you to run your remuneration through the PEO. However, you know, depending on your setup, an LLC, uh, uh, you know, how you're set up, then you may take a K-1, um, but most all remuneration of all our employers is supposed to be run through the PEO. John, explain why a PEO is good for a company. It really speaks to the overall process for the organization, helping the employer reduce their costs, time back in their day, and focusing on their core business. Many small companies, and mid-sized companies I deal with, they are caught in the minutia of dealing with day-to-day -day paperwork and processes of business. Our back-end systems will help them reduce, relieve some of those pains. We like to say we're the 500-pound aspirin for the employer. John, what happens when an employee leaves? And as if an employer offers employees health benefits now, when the employee leaves, we need to continue that coverage. There's a rule passed by the federal government years ago called COBRA, and we help administer that for the employer, it takes a headache off their table. We make sure the employees offer continued coverage once they leave the organization. Is there a minimum amount of employees where that kicks in? 
Um, the number is 20 for, for minimum employees up the offer COBRA too. Okay. Yeah. And what about other compliance related issues, Brian? Are there any other compliance issues that I need to be concerned with that, that a PO will handle? Oh yeah, um, th there's plenty. I mean, from we'll help you with the OSHA uh, that John mentioned earlier, I believe. Um, we're, we're risk compliance. Uh, so let's say uh, you're dealing with a workers' comp situation um, where it's on our employer of record. So it's our policies. So we have a vested interest as well with you. Um, the idea is to keep that sustainable growth, but from a compliance standpoint, HR, uh, we could go deep into that, but uh, the simplest way is we're gonna help guide you on the HR uh, compliance, as John mentioned earlier, that there's so many rules and regulations that change yearly. Um, I mean, the last time I looked at, you know, they've gone from years ago, it's like, it seemed like one page, now we're up to like five to 10 pages. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's crazy out there with the compliance side. And it does affect every small employer. It's not just, uh, besides when you get into the 50 and greater, um, that's a benefit, ACA compliance. So we do a lot of things with the ACA. Um, so we help you stay in compliance with that as well. One of the uh, things that I recall as, as an employer, which I really liked, and I'm not sure if it was a PEO side or if it was just the payroll side or whatever, was having that handbook. They, they gave me a, a bunch of things and you could go through and check the things that apply to your yeah. business and write some things in. And then they gave us this really neat handbook and it didn't cost us anything other than the fact that we were working with them. Is that is that part of the PEO side? Yes, okay. yes, absolutely. Yeah. To expand on the answer in terms of compliance issues, uh, for example, I was dealing with a mid-sized company recently, HR department, uh, and they had a fairly large lawsuit pertaining to the Family, Family Leave Act, FMLA, MLA, um, where an employee was let go. Not let go, actually an employee left the organization because they had to take care of a sick parent. They, they were never notified by rules of FLMA that they could retain their job. Three months had passed and the employee realized, wait a minute, I didn't need to, ret I didn't need to resign. I should be able to keep my job. They're now suing that employer. Oh. If they were a client of, of ours, or a PEO, I should say, the PEO organization, that would not have been missed. Okay, now FMLA is Family Medical Leave Act, is that, that correct? That is correct, thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what about workers' comp rates, which is always a big concern for employers? Um, Brian, why don't you handle that one? Sure. The workers' comp, we, we basically will vet the, the best solution for them, but we take that over as well. Um, there's several ways we can go with that. Um, the neat thing is we are solution-driven again, so it's not an all-one fit. fit. Um, it, certain companies, it, it's uh, depending on their modification, uh, their experience rating, um, that will apply to the cost or the cost savings, if you will. Um, the other thing is with the comp, obviously we keep you in compliance, the audits go away. So um, I think earlier John alluded to another small company that you know, was having issues with audits. Uh, we had issues with um, even getting secured in the workers comp. Um, so that's when we come into play and we can obviously with our size and strength be able to provide that for the employer. But do the rates tend to come down? Yeah, in, in a lot of cases they do. Um, it just, it depends on this, the, the current situation of that client, but ultimately, yes, the idea is that we can reduce that because we have more buying power. The other thing too, is I think is a PEO recognizes the fact that, that we believe that workers' comp is a managed cost. And through the tools HR is able to gain from PEO, that in cost now becomes controllable. Okay. As far as workers' compensation, can you explain that for the benefit of our audience? Yeah, sure. Um, workers' compensation is usually, it's a requirement. Uh, each state is driven a little differently depending, but for instance, Florida, uh, once you have, uh, if you're in a, a blue collar, gray collar industry, uh, once you have four or greater, you, uh, you have to have it. Four okay. employees. Yes, sir. And, and what happens in that is basically a glorified coverage of insurance to protect the employee on the job. So what we do is we come in there and help mitigate that and reduce those risks with our risk management services that we offer as well. But also, it also allows you some buying power. And you're not wasting your time every year. One more thing that relieves the owner and recovers some time for them is shopping workers' comp or dealing with an audit. So once you're with the PEO, you don't usually have those audits. Uh, per se, to have to, to worry about, and the renewals are through the PEO. So it's basically a one-stop shop. So if I have a PEO, and whether I'm interested in selling my company at some point, or just want to add value to my business, is having a PEO a, a positive thing to do? I, I believe it is. 
personally working on small business owners, there's a lot of risk liability that comes with owning a company. If your goal down the road is to sell your business, you want to reduce the risk for the new potential owner. One of the best ways to do that is to transfer the, the liability of your employees to a PEO. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and Dennis, if I can expand on that, sure. the, uh, we just had a client actually, uh, literally, uh, well, two different scenarios. One, it's, a, it's a, a practice, a medical practice, and he's ready to retire. So a completely different entity is coming in to to assume that clientele in practice. So by them already in the in in the PEO situation with us, it was easy for him to talk to him and now they're wanting to revet it and understand what's the value proposition of the PEO. Well, once he starts peeling back the onion of all the things he has to do to start that practice or he keep it as a separate FEIN number or roll it up, he realized the value of keeping us in the, in okay. the mix. And EIN or FEIN is federal employer identification number. Yes. Correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so am I likely to get better employees because I have these PEO benefits, extra benefits, or is that something that's going to help me out? That, that is a huge factor in today's small business. Um, the competition for good employees is very, very tight in the marketplace. If you look at today's TV ads, for example, mm -hmm. you see Amazon advertising for new employees, and they have employees in the, in the factory talking about, I now have benefits, I now have eye, I have dental. Well, it's hard for the small employer to compete against that. Right. They can get good, good employees who want to stay with you. So through the PEO, we now can bring you 4,500 benefits to a small organization, it makes it affordable and accessible to your employers, to employees, which helps you attract the best in your industry. You know, that reminds me of uh, when I got an Egg McMuffin last time at McDonald's, the server, and I have seen the TV ads where they get college tuition paid now. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've learned a lot about PEOs and uh, our audience has certainly benefited from this information. At least I, uh, I hope they are. And they're going to probably make a decision. Is this something I want to look into and maybe consider for my firm? So tell me in a summary fashion, uh, Brian, if you will, a before and after as to, you know, what their company might look like before they do it and after and, and really the, the real effect of doing it. Sure. They, you know, I like to think they're in chaos <laughs> and they need us. But, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I see it, it, what's really great is to be able to put your head on your pillow knowing that you're helping every client. Um, I've been doing this a long time. And so when you bring up the small guy that's struggling, you know, putting in many hours, maybe his spouse is in the business, um, maybe a significant other is trying to do all the paperwork, it frees them up as well as the compliance side. So once again, if you didn't have to do all these things, and you got to just focus on your business, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't do it, right? So it allows them to utilize us to do those items for them. So the compliance factor, the HR feature, the better benefits, um, the payroll administration, workers' compensation, uh, you know, it, it just is a, it's an affordable way to focus on your business and allow us to take care of the minutia. Well, I'm a first-hand believer. Again, I went through that, so, um, you know, it was a great thing to do. And like I tell people, it's a no brainer. I always say that. So Brian, bottom line me, what's the, what's the best uh, reason to have a PEO? Best reason would be to save you time and energy to focus on your business and recover some of that time spent doing the non-revenue generating items. So, and save you money. John and Brian, thank you for explaining what a PEO has to offer. Our viewers now have a much better understanding of this topic. If you'd like more information about today's show, or you'd like to inquire about having your own SCORE mentor, please reach out to us at 1-800-634-0245 or www.score.org. John and Brian, thank you again for being my guest today on SCORE Business TV. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Wells Fargo. Please tune in to our next episode. Until then, this is Dennis Zink. Thank you and have a great day.